my screen here is not ringing. So. Okay, um, you can actually wait just a minute. We're going to get going. I'm waiting to see. There it goes. It says we're recording now. Okay, well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to the first of a three-part series called Turn the Tables. This series is brought to you by the WMED Innovation Center in partnership with the Michigan Venture Capital Association. Turn the Tables is a reverse pitch event where venture capital firms and angel groups present to entrepreneurs. They will share their investment focus areas, their submission and review processes, their ideal investment criteria, and more. The purpose of the event is to demystify the investment process so entrepreneurs can better understand how investors make investment decisions. Please note that the presentations at this event are not to be considered offers to sell or invest by any of the VCs or angels. Also, during the Q&A period after each presentation, keep the questions general and focused on the investment process. This isn't the time to ask for um, investors to invest in your company. But do feel free to either drop your questions or comments in the chat, which is located uh, in the conversation bubble at the top of your screen, or we will have um, live Q&A after each of the presentations. So today's presenters in order will be Jeff Wesley and Prem Badagala from the Michigan Rise Pre-Seed Fund. We'll have Paul D'Amato from the Michigan Capital Network, and we have Charlie Moret and Jim Tenzillo from Invest Michigan. Um, each presenter will have up to 15 minutes to present their fund, followed by five minutes of Q&A, basically 20 minutes per presenter. And since everyone will have, uh, everyone is going to introduce themselves during their presentations, I will jump right in and ask Jeff and Prem to go first. And the way you do that, whoever's sharing your screen, there's a little square at the top with an arrow in it. Press that and you will be able to select the screen you'd like to share and we should be ready to go. Happy to, but only problem is it won't let me share my screen. <laughs> uh, so what, what I'm going to try to do, uh, I've been trying that for the past two, three minutes. Um, Paul, do you want to maybe go first if you have it lined up or if you can try to share the screen? I can send my slides to you, Sandra. Why don't you do that? Go ahead and send them to me and I will pull them up and share them. And Paul, is that OK? Do you mind jumping in and going first? I, I knew you'd, you'd spring that on me, but no, that's of course, that's fine. Happy to. Um, I was in the background making a couple of changes to my slide deck. So, all right. So uh, this is this is a good turn of the tables from that perspective, too, to see uh, uh, what everybody's working with. This, uh, this. So let me share my screen. OK, Okay. let's see here. that coming up and perfect okay you can begin anytime you're ready and the rest of us if we want to put ourselves on mute so we don't make noise that would be awesome okay paul go ahead and take it away great well uh pleasure seeing everybody here today i'm here to talk a little about the michigan capital network and uh what we do here for uh investors and how we participate in the state of michigan so our organization has uh it's a bit of a hybrid we run uh, three venture capital funds under the MCN brand. And we also run four angel groups in uh, Grand Rapids, Kalamazoo, uh, Flint, and Detroit, uh, uh, four different brands, each with a local, local presence and some local interests. For example, in Kalamazoo, probably a little more interest in life science. In Detroit, maybe a little more interest in software. And so we manage that as a group uh, and we will lead deals with our venture fund or uh, at the angel group level. So, we're, uh, there are several things we feel separates us. So our investor network is very strong through the angel group and the close uh, contact with a lot of strong companies and investors in Michigan. Our deal flow is, uh, is very strong. In fact, this year it's stronger than ever. We've looked at 2000 deals in the last 12 months, uh, more than 2000. Uh, from an investor perspective, we've got a strong history of value creation. We've got some excellent uh, exits under our belt, great company performance. Uh, we're happy to um, uh, be involved with. Our geography gives us some advantages, but in, in terms of uh, this group, I think those are, those are largely the same. So, I mean, we're seeing some of the same advantages of being a Michigan investor that, uh, that uh, Invest Michigan and Michigan Rides are also seeing. Uh, and our team, it's also uh, very strong. So we have a, a deep bench of experienced uh, investor managers. So over the year, we've been in, we've been doing this for 16 years. One of the oldest networks in Michigan. We've invested throughout the state. All those gray dots are 
some of our portfolio companies we've invested with more than more than 60 investments, hundreds of transactions, uh, four IPOs, many many M and A transactions. We've been doing this for a long time. We like to think we're experienced, but of course, we're also learning every day. Uh, we've got um, and the the angel groups are spread around in those areas, following closely where our uh, our, our portfolio companies are located. It's a little bit of, on our team. We have four analysts, uh, three managing partners, uh, directors, and uh, people that are focused on this full time. So we're uh, very active in the space and, and, and leading a process that we think we feel can scale. Of course, we're growing too uh, and uh, adding new uh, new members, new funds, and uh, new portfolio companies all the time. And all that takes, that requires a strong team to support all that. Um, but uh, we've got an amazing group. Uh, don't have time to go into everybody's background, but uh, they're uh, they're a pleasure to work with, and obviously we wouldn't be making the progress we are without them. Just a really quick two uh, two quick case studies on some investments we've done and how they've impacted the area. Grand River Aseptic Manufacturing is a company based in Grand Rapids. They're a sterile fill company, and uh, and these days they are making the Johnson & Johnson vaccine for the U.S. Army. So we're really excited to have been a part of that in the early stages. This was already an exit for us. So we had sold this company to a private equity group a few years ago. But a uh, nice quote from Tom Ross, the president and CEO, that time wouldn't be here if it wasn't for Grand Angels and the Grand Angels members investing in the company. Uh, like a lot of companies, they have a brush with death at, at some point where they really need capital. And uh, and this company was um, was on a, on the ropes and we were uh, we were happy to be a part of um, of helping them with that. Uh, and now they're now they're just killing it, too. So it's really exciting. Uh, Tetra Therapeutics, another really interesting company we invested uh, eight years ago, I believe. Um, Pretty substantial return for our organization, uh, but um, acquired last year for half a billion dollars. Uh, so really, and Kalamazoo success. So for all your all your folks here in Kalamazoo, so based right at the uh, at BRCC uh, and still based still based there. Still, the labs are still there, even though they've been acquired. Um, so what we look for in new companies, we look for strong teams, uh, barrier to competition. And for us, that means primarily intellectual property. So in, in cases like, uh, uh, like Tetra Therapeutics, that was composition of matter patents on their drug. Uh, in the case study of, of Graham, that was the clean fill lab that is uh, a very difficult process to get that through the FDA. Uh, other people could do it, but it's not easy. It's not cheap. And uh, and that was the barrier there. But other barriers to entry, barriers to competition could be trade secrets or a deep tech solution in software. We look for reasonable deal terms. Uh, we have investors too that are in this uh, to make money, but we also understand that the company and founders need to make money too. And so we, we are interested in finding deal, uh, deal terms that work for both. Target industries we look for are life science, software, and advanced manufacturing. They're uh, in software primarily B2B SaaS, but not exclusively. Life science, with fairly broad spectrum from drug discovery, diagnostics, uh, medical devices, med tech. Um, advanced manufacturing is fairly, fairly broad too. Many of our investor members are uh, involved in manufacturing, and so uh, uh, Part of our strategy there is not only to invest, but make introductions to advanced manufacturing companies that want to implement advanced technologies right in their facility. The way we invest, for the for the most for the most part, we invest in bridge to an A or A rounds as our first investment. Not exclusively, we have done seed investments as our first round. We've also done B, C, and even D investments as our first investment. So uh, we've been doing this for a long time, and we've probably <laughs> at some point or other on uh, almost every every scenario here, but um, but our, our sweet spot is probably a bridge to an A or an A. Uh, we prefer convertible notes or preferred equity. Uh, we, uh, we generally avoid uh, safe agreements. We will lead deals. Uh, we lead approximately 20% of our deals, but we will also join or help build a syndicate. Our check size ranges from 100,000 to 1.5 million. 
which I know a fairly broad range, but uh, uh, depends a lot on the on the stage of the company. For the most, you know, in general, later stage deals, B or C rounds, uh, attract a much larger check size from our membership. So it's easy for I don't know easy, but it's it's not unusual for us to get beyond a million dollars for a later stage round, and for earlier earlier investments, they tend to be more in the two hundred and fifty thousand dollar range. But we've made some smaller investments as well. In terms of coordinating things with our network, the deal may either be led through our venture group and shared with our angel network or the other way around. It could be uh, early investment with our angel group and then come back to our venture group later. So uh, how that works depends a lot on the stage of the company. That's it. Uh, that's my short pitch. I'll, uh, but I, as I understand it, I have some time to answer questions. Happy to do that. Uh, I will close this slide deck. If I do that right, I did not do that right. Oh, nope. You did not do that right. That's okay. We're going to set my timer so I don't, if we don't get too much questions and we get diverted and then I forget and we're talking away, so I have the timer set again. We do have one question over in the chat. Um, Jeff is asking, I thought I heard no preferences for safes. Why is that? Mm -hmm. Um. We don't give, I guess, to be to be frank, it doesn't give the investor some of the protections that the other two vehicles do. Uh, a safe is a, a vehicle to get to equity, and equity is, from an investor perspective, the um, uh, the the cleanest and most most reliable uh, way to invest in an early company. It has the most investor protections, and that's meaningful for our investors. However, we understand that a preferred uh, equity round can be expensive for early companies. And I know that a safe agreement is the least expensive from a legal perspective. Uh, so I, I respect that. Um, and we do, we are, we are looking at safe agreements uh, and you can make a safe agreement look a lot like a note agreement. Mm -hmm. And in cases where a safe agreement can you know, look and function like a note agreement, we would, we would consider it. Uh, I understand that, it, and this is this. You don't see safe agreements in generally in later stage A, B, or C uh, rounds, and since that's mostly where we invest, uh, we generally don't see them as much. Now, you know that's changing a little bit, and as things move in that that area, we will will obviously consider them. Uh, but since we don't invest in pre-seed generally rounds, we generally don't invest in safe agreements. But uh, as these things change, there are different ways of structuring a safe agreement that I think could work for our organization. OK, thanks. Um, Vishal has asked a question. Actually, no, um, we're, we're a pretty collaborative community here. So Vishal, why don't you go ahead and unmute yourself and you can go ahead and ask your question. Are you unmuting? Sorry, was that for me? Go ahead. Uh, sorry. Yeah. So, so yeah, uh, I wanted to understand you mentioned software. So does that include fintechs as well uh, yeah. with analytics and data science? It and, does. And what is the you uh, in your slides? You had mentioned that there are seed rounds in some cases. So are those post revenue or pre revenue as well with, a, so for example, MVP launched? Post revenue. We we. Uh, as a venture fund, we don't invest in pre-revenue software deals. Uh, in, on occasion, the Angel Group has done that. Uh, on our on our venture side, we're interested in deals that are at a four five hundred thousand dollar ARR run rate on our venture side. Uh, so that, yeah, obviously, um, we and and the reason is it's 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 difficult for us to understand to gauge um, market uh, product market fit. And until there's some customers, really. So, right. so that's what we're that's what we look for for our, so, for our venture fund. But yeah, maybe not for angels. So quickly, a follow up on that. So, is there a threshold or a minimum that you look out for? For example, what's the revenue size you're looking to start having a discussion? Yeah, four to four to five hundred thousand in ARR is typical starting okay. place for our venture fund. Got it. Thanks. Thank you, uh, Bob Forgy. You've got a question. Would you like to unmute and ask it? Thanks, Sandra. Paul, um, you may be aware that the NSF requires um, all notes to be safe um, in the form of a safe. 
uh, when you get to the phase two SBIR, where there's a larger amount of money in the control of the company. Are you open to discussing a safe at, at you know, if you were being had a company that was successful with a phase two? Well, I'm certainly open to it. I mean, like I like I said, it's 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 possible to structure a safe that, so it's very much like a like a note agreement. But that is surprising to me. And in fact, I, I believe we've invested in note agreements with NSF backed companies. So I'd like to understand more about that. Uh, I'm almost positive we have. But um, if that's a new change to the NSF, then yeah, I'd like to learn more about that. I, I don't know. Maybe Jeff Wesley can speak to that. I think it is a change in the last year or so, if I recall. So, okay. okay. Excellent question. Um, thank you. Uh, Cindy has a question. We've got two more questions in the chat, but I want them to unmute and ask them. Cindy, can you go ahead and ask your question? Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Hi. Um, yeah, I'm a female founder in Kalamazoo with a digital health startup. Um, and I've noticed that most of the angel groups I've reached out to um, our later stage, such as yours, more the um, Series A instead of the pre-seed. Um, so where do you recommend that early stage um, pre-seed founders reach out to? Well, that is, that's, a, that's a good question. I, there are some groups that invest earlier than we do. I, I think that I'd, I'd let uh, Michigan Rise and Invest Michigan answer where they stand on that. They may have a, may have a different approach. Uh, I would uh, invest Detroit is another source. Uh, depending on your your technology, I would uh, not you know dismiss grants and NSF type type approaches too. Those are those are very good sources for early stage non dilutive financing that, that I would recommend. Uh, but you're right. I, I think you're. I think what you're seeing with our group is common in the angel. From what we understand from the angels nationwide, is that most angel groups are moving a little later. This does create a funding gap that's that's difficult to uh, to get through. Um, and you know, it's it's just a function of the market. It's it, it is risky investing early, and angels are not uh, uh, <laughs> not unaware of that, and so they're starting to be more attracted to later stage deals. It's just uh, okay. just a function of the market. Great, thank you. We have one last question before we move on to our next group. Um, Jennifer, would you like to unmute and ask your question? Um, yeah, I was wondering where you uh, find your founders, if they are just finding you or how you are finding founders that are looking for funding. And I would also uh, uh, suggest to Cindy that she check out the number of pitch events that are going on across the state. There's a lot of pitch events and there's all kinds of investors in those audiences. Okay. Sure. Well, so the pitch events are a great source of, of deals. That is that is a great that's a great place to look. We I, I think some of our best deals just come in through our network. We do events like this. We uh, 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 work with Jeff and Prem and Charlie and Jim and everyone else and and we really do share deals. This is not, it's, it's interesting. Um, I, I think the assumption is that we are competing, uh, competing groups and we're really not, we're very collaborative. Uh, we had co we've co-invested with all, all of these, everybody here today um, and, and plan on doing that in the future too. So if a deal is too early for us or the wrong market or whatever, we'll, you know, we'll definitely try to make a referral if we can. Um, so a lot of our deals come in that way through a network. Uh, but yeah, we attend uh, pitch events these days. The pitch events are really easy. They're on Zoom. So instead of getting on a plane, we're just opening up a window on our computer and we're and that's driving a lot of the uh, deal flow that we're seeing. Uh, but yeah, I, I think, uh, you know, connecting with people in the industry, uh, we do get some uh, referrals that are that are worthwhile through our website, although uh, we also get a lot of things on our website that just are not obviously a good fit for our organization. But uh, but that's an approach, and and many groups have different ways of onboarding. Like uh, Invest Detroit has a very good uh, uh, Salesforce integrated website where you can apply and get sort of you know considered right away. Um, uh, our group is probably more driven. The early investments are driven more through our through our angel network and in, in each market. But um, it's it's all I guess it all comes down to networking uh, for the most part with us on deal flow. Great. Thank you. Uh, Ramona made a comment for those of you who haven't been watching the chat. She says for uh, health tech, I would reach out to MedTech and Paul Reiser at TechTown. 
There are accelerators. Definitely look at accelerators here in Michigan and um, scale health. So thank you for the comment, Ramona. We appreciate that. We are going to jump into our next presenters. Prem, I do have your slides. We're going to have um, Prem and Jeff from Michigan Rise. So let me share that. How are we doing there? We good? Yeah, that looks good. Okay, yeah. so whenever yeah. you're ready. Thanks yeah, so for jumping in the breach first. Appreciate yeah. that. Yeah, so Prem and I, first of all, we're just a pleasure to be here. Uh, um, you know, I, I guess the thing before I start just following up on the other question that I think is important for everybody to know, there's kind of a roadmap in Michigan. Not every startup takes that roadmap, but uh, generally as you start your venture, um, you would be working with pitch events or accelerators or grants or non-dilutive opportunities or working with the SBDC. Then you tend to go up that road and you hit Invest Detroit. Then you tend to go up that road and you hit Michigan Rise. Then you go up that road and you hit Invest Michigan. So not everything follows that path, but that's kind of a roadmap that working with the MEDC that's been designed over a number of years. So just something important to be aware of. But again, we're, it's a pleasure for us to be here. We're going to kind of team up on you today. So hopefully um, we'll provide you some valued information. So if you could flip to the next slide. So I think the first thing to understand about us is a little background where we belong. Yeah. So, uh, Sandra, can you um, zoom that or uh, make it full screen because it's very, very small? Yeah, especially for us older crowd. That's good. Uh, oh, OK. Yeah. So um, so first a little background, um, the MSU Foundation, there's four subsidiaries. For you that don't know, the MSU Foundation is a nonprofit entity formed in 1973. Something to be proud of, the foundation's home run was cisplatin carboplatin, one of the drugs that Lance Armstrong actually saved his life. So when you have uh, Stanford that invented Google, the big home run around MSU was this drug. So from that drug, this nonprofit, um, its focus is economic development and entrepreneurialism. We have four subsidiaries that set under the MSU Foundation, Spartan Innovations, Red Cedar, Michigan Rise, and University Corporate Research Park. The takeaway for everybody is we have uh, kind of proven programming around startups. We actually run two accelerators. We have a pretty deep bench of talent, even beyond Prem and I that are here. Um, we actually run three funds. We have two funds within Red Cedar, and we also have the Michigan Rise Fund, which is the focus today. We also have real estate that we run a technology innovation center, and we also have wet lab space available to us. So it's a pretty unique model around the country. We're just very blessed that there was a home run at the foundation and that they have this structure set up to really help startups and create jobs in Michigan um, behind us. So um, <coughs> next slide. Oops, hang on. Yeah, that's all right. I won't put you under pressure. <laughs> Why won't it go to the next slide? It's the, the arrow next to it, yeah. There we go. Yeah, so here we're here to talk about Michigan Rise today. So Michigan Rise was launched in August 10th last year. You can see we made our first investment on August 14th, so that's pretty fast. The reason for that was uh, wor uh, working with the MSF and MEDC, which we're grateful to have as partners. It, um, we had to get the fund up and running, work through the contract. But once we were up and running, we moved pretty quickly because obviously with COVID and the needs out there, we're one of those critical gap funders that can help startups. And I'm just really um, thankful to our entire team, some uh, preems here today, but we have others uh, and the impact we're having with this new fund. So. With that, Prem, I'm going to turn it over to you to go through some of these stats. Thanks, Jeff. Um, so in the seven plus months we've been in operation, yeah. we've closed uh, investments in 15 companies. Uh, there are actually uh, three that have been approved and that will close uh, probably by the end of the week. Um, and, um, you know, we're being pretty intentional um, um, in about diversity. Um, women founders account for about 40 percent uh, of those companies and um, founders of color um, are about 33%. One of the thesis um, when we submitted our proposal to the MEDC was that we would focus 
um, you know, significantly on the university spin-outs, which are the drivers of innovation in our state. We are blessed to have fantastic universities in Michigan, and all the programming that the MEDC puts out, the MTRAC and other grant funding, um, you know, this is to kind of keep that pipeline coming for the likes of us and downstream investors, uh, whether it's Grand Angels or other venture funds, it's really important that we support university spin out. So a, a third of our um, companies um, are university spin outs today, and I, I kind of foresee that uh, you know ratio being the same going forward. Uh, we do tranche our investments. Um, our, our average first check size has been about 120. It's between 100 and 150 k. We have a cap of about uh, of, of 250,000 per company. Um, we have not uh, invested the entire amount in any one company um, to date. Total capital invested um, is uh, 1.8 million, which has leveraged uh, about 40 million in dilutive capital. Um, if you tag on, you know, grants and other non-dilutive funding, um, that is going to be higher. Next slide, please. So. This is the portfolio as it stands today. Um, just over 50% um, is in the healthcare sector. Over time, um, I think it's going to diversify a little bit more with uh, a third in life sciences, um, a third in like software type companies, whether it's uh, fintech, cybersecurity, and a third in other sectors such as ag tech. We are MSU based. Um, there's a lot of ag tech um, you know, technologies coming out, as well as materials companies would um, kind of form the other third. Uh, next slide, please. We are uh, blessed to have fantastic partners um, statewide. We collaborate uh, with the entities on this slide on a regular basis to help drive our pipeline, uh, to help us uh, understand the technologies better, uh, and also to co-invest. Um, Mike Flanagan um, at Ann Arbor Spark, uh, Steve Hawkinson at BRCC, Dan Radomsky at Centropolis. In fact, we're closing a deal that uh, is being backed by Centropolis uh, this week. Um, IDV, we work with them on a, a very, very regular and strong basis. Um, a significant number of our companies are also in IDV uh, portfolio. Like Jeff mentioned, IDV typically comes you know, upstream from us and we are a tad downstream. Um, and uh, we are uh, really, really fortunate to have uh, the support of uh, the entire team at Renaissance. They have a fantastic event in uh, Undemo Day, which has uh, proven very fruitful for many of our portfolio companies in uh, connecting with uh, funds both, um, you know, in state as well as nationally. And, you know, given our mission to support university spinouts, we have uh, strong relationships with tech transfer offices. We, we are working on building more of those, but uh, we have uh, good relationships across the state, but looking to strengthen that as well. Um, I'll give you a good case study in terms of collaboration statewide. Um, Ace Alexa Bio um, is a therapeutics company um, uh, commercializing um, um, a technology to address ARDS. Um, and um, this was a female founded company spun out from University of Michigan, uh, received a grant funding through the Business Accelerator Fund. Um, Michigan Rise worked with IDV, BRCC, um, Ann Arbor Spark uh, pre-seed fund that had some returns, which they're actively deploying, and some members of Grand Angels. Uh, all of us together helped um, them close a two million round um, just, um, I think, in early Q1. So that's a fantastic example of um, that collaboration statewide. And uh, I don't know if anyone has seen the MEDC subway map that kind of pretty much hits uh, all the, the stations on that subway map um, you know, um, around the state. Next slide, please. So what do we look for um, when you're um, um, looking at companies uh, from an investment perspective? They have to be, for Michigan Rise, they have to be Michigan-based. We are funded by um, uh, Michigan taxpayers um, and uh, an MSU foundation is also an LPNR fund. So they have to be Michigan-based where key founders are based in Michigan. Uh, it has to have a high tech or a tech enable component. We, we won't invest in Main Street companies or you know, pure service type companies. Um, they should be providing a disruptive solution in a large market, right? So um, iterative solution is not as attractive as if they are providing some disruption um, in a, in a, in a significant, for a significant problem. Um, it should be defensible, um, whether it be trade secrets, know-how, or filed IP. That is definitely something that we look for. Um, and uh, it should be, you know, venture scalable. Uh, is this a um, opportunity? 
that can attract um, downstream funding from you know angel funds or venture investors, where we believe um, that you know companies like that uh, posit uh, the state for good economic development in terms of you know jobs. Uh, and uh, outsized returns. Uh, we were also like you know well-rounded teams, and we don't we don't we don't um, um, uh, invest in you know uh, non-technical single-person uh, teams. We would like you know there to be a good balance of uh, business acumen and technical skill, or if they're surrounded by uh, advisors with relevant experience in the sector that they're trying to disrupt. Um, we are intentional about diversity. Um, that's borne out by the numbers I shared with you earlier. Um, you know, whether it is, um, you know, demographic diversity or, you know, geographic diversity, um, support university spin-outs, like I said, and we are looking to bring um, value beyond just the investment given our setup. We are, we are kind of in a, we are blessed to have a unique setup uh, where we have uh, infrastructure um, our, with our various programs, whether it be venture creation, um, and you know, uh, real estate and placemaking, as well as our network, right? Uh, MSU Foundation is an LP uh, in several venture funds across the country. So uh, when we come in with an investment, uh, we are bringing to, we are looking to bring value much beyond the 250 total that we can invest in any one company. Uh, what we don't invest, um, um, or we don't provide grants. Um, I know sometimes we get approached. Um, uh, that uh, you know, we, we provide funding in the form of a grant. We don't do that. Also, um, we don't provide automatic match. Um, you know, um, if it does, if a company does have funding from angels, that's definitely a plus. But we do go through a rigorous diligence process um, to see if it's a fit for our fund, and uh, we do not, um, you know, provide an automatic match. Next slide, please. Uh, investment mechanics, um, like I said, we tranche our investments. Um, uh, typical first check size, uh, about 100 to 150. Um, we went through the second bullet there. So of the 15 companies to date, um, 10 have been uh, in the form of convertible promissory notes, um, two in safes and uh, three in preferred equity. Kind of going back to um, um, uh, the point made earlier, uh, I think in Michigan, definitely um, there is not as much um, preference for safes, um, and uh, this is a reflection of both the stage at which we get involved. Uh, companies don't necessarily want to price themselves at the stage we get involved, but also I think there's a there's an outsized preference for um, convertible um, debt versus uh, safe instruments. Best way to get in touch with us uh, would be through our website. Um, there is a similar to IDV, we have a CRM type application process. Sorry, there's no slide. I'm just uh, yeah, uh, <laughs> off of mind here. So uh, we do have a CRM tied uh, application process. So the website would be a fantastic way to get in touch with us. We also love warm referrals from our collaboration partners uh, that helps us uh, triage our process and, and connect with the entrepreneurs um, across the state. Timeline from uh, first contact to close can range between uh, eight to uh, 16 weeks. It's it's a function of you know, how organized is the company and you know our um, ability to learn more about the company um, and get to a close in a timely fashion. Have some investments taken longer than that? Yes, um, you know, not every company that walks through our door uh, necessarily um, can walk away with an investment, right? Some Many companies are way too early for us. So we provide them with constructive feedback you know, ask them to get in touch with the SBDC or other, um, you know, uh, agencies across the state to help them, um, you know, get to a point where they would be a fit for our fund. Next slide, please. Jeff, if you can. Uh... Yeah, so following up on that, you know, we really try to engage people to reach out to us, whether it's website or directly, and just to provide support at whatever stage you're at, just to help you with the statewide network. You know, we do have a, an experienced team you, know, you see Prem and I, I'm just blessed to work with Prem and partner with them every day. Um, we continue to add to the team as the fund grows. Matt just joined us here, I think within the last number of weeks. Um, he's coming over from the Michigan uh, Biomedical Venture Fund. So we're it's, it's great to add him to our group. Um, we also have a venture fellow on our team, so we're uh, Hunter. Um, it's just we we were we brought that new program to Mid Michigan as we set this fund up. So it's great to be partnering with that organization that just does great things. So 
when you look at our team, you'll, I hope you'll find we're very engaging, we're very supportive, and we try to get involved throughout the state because you know relationships matter when it comes to everything we do. So, um, so this is our group. So, um, so as we wrap up, I just want to say thank you before we get questions here, and just really look forward to working with the groups on the call and everybody on the call, just to really put Michigan on the map and continue the positive momentum around startups. All right, thank well, you. And well, your your contact, your contact slide is up there yep. so people can see that. And we are going to, if everyone had a chance to write that down, if not, we can provide that later or you can drop it in the chat. We're gonna come back and we have a few questions. First of all, um, if you haven't had a chance to check out the chat, go ahead and look over there. A lot of folks are dropping in great helpful resources. Uh, Jeff dropped in something about the Renaissance hot list and Jennifer gave us something about the uh, Traverse City News Tech, TC New Tech, their pitch event. Um, so lots of great ideas out there. Bob, uh, Bob Forge, you have another question for this group. We want to go ahead and unmute and ask it. Sure. So Jeff or Prem, I, I, either one, since both Red Cedar Ventures and Michigan Rise have a relationship with um, the MSU Foundation, how, how do the Red Cedar Venture and Michigan Rise work together, or are there clear barriers where you proceed from one to the next fund and you don't really commingle cash because it's really taking it out of one pocket and putting it in the other? Thanks for that question, Bob. I can take that, Jeff. Uh, so <laughs> Red Cedar Ventures has uh, two funds, Bob. One is the pre-seed fund, which has been the entity which has supported uh, the ISO Therapeutics, for example, um, since the get-go. Um, once those companies get more traction, whether it is more validation through animal studies, et cetera, then they would be a fit for um, Michigan Rise. Uh, Michigan Rise is downstream from Red Cedar Ventures Opportunity Fund, but we also do have a cap of 250K, right? So once we hit that and potentially the company continues to make progress, we have the ability to support those companies from our Red Cedar Ventures Opportunity Fund. So if you look at the continuum of capital, it's Red Cedar Ventures Pre-Seed Fund, Michigan Rise, um, at least internally, and then downstream from Michigan Rise would be the Opportunity Fund. Yeah, and I just add to that, they have different governance rules, different committees, a little bit of an investment thesis difference. Red, Red Cedar is more MSU focused, Michigan Rise is more statewide focused, so. Okay, wonderful. Um, Lana, I see Lana has her hand up. Lana, if you have a question, do you want to unmute and ask it, please? Yeah. Um, my question is uh, twofold, and that is number one, uh, do you have a certain ARR target that you like to see before you consider um, investing in a company? And the second part of I caught the first one. I'll try to answer. I caught the first part of the question. I think most of it. Um, so, uh, Solana, maybe if you want to uh, put your question in the chat box, uh, the second part I can answer that too. But for the ARR, um, you know, we don't have like a minimum threshold as such, but it's a case by case basis. What we, um, you know, don't invest are in ideas um, or unvalidated MVPs, right? So we do like, you know, some validation from. The end users is the dog gonna eat the dog food, right? To to Paul's point earlier, uh, is there a potential pro product market fit here? Uh, are they paying for pilots? Um, you know, or is there an LOI? You know, sometimes we we see um, you know uh, a pilot that's like you know 10k from a multi-billion-dollar organization, and that probably doesn't speak too well for the product, right? If if the company has billions of dollars in revenue, they're really gung ho about a product. Uh, we want to see some meaningful traction with that entity. Yeah, and I think I'd add to that. You know, if you take a cancer therapeutic or you take. A, uh, high tech patented disruptive technology come out of the university, university you might not have ARR. So you got to kind of factor that in too. Whereas if it's a non scientific, non patented technology, you want to see more ARR or more traction. So there's a lot of factors that go into that. But I think one of the hardest things for all startups is getting to those first customers, which I encourage you to get to as fast as you can because that makes a difference for everything. So. Okay. 
Great, thank you. Um, yeah, Lon, we were not able to hear the second part of your question because your connection was really bad. So if you could drop that question in the chat box, we'll we'll make sure that you get an answer to that. And we have time for one last question. Valerie has popped one in. Do you want to unmute Valerie and ask that before we go to the next group? I don't have access. Sure. To, just so you know, I apologize. That's why oh. I didn't drop it in there. Oh, you can email it to me and I'll, I'll do it. Email it to me if you can. OK, thank you. Okay. Go ahead, Valerie. Sure. Well, I was wondering if the backing from strategic partnerships, um, larger companies and also organizations that um, have like um, a lot of uh, the customers that you're going from, if they announce like alliances, would that help you to kind of consider that as promoting your products and help you maybe be interested in maybe an investment? Definitely helps. Um, I think uh, we won't turn it away as like, you know, oh my God, you have strategic partners. No, we won't invest in you, right? So no, we definitely help, but it is a case by case basis. You know, how much is the you know relationship? Uh, how meaningful is it? What can that bring the company? So we do um, look at all factors when we make that investment decision. It's not an automatic um, kind of check the box kind of stuff. Okay, great. Perfect, thank, thank you. you. Thank you, and we are right on time. We have one more exciting panel uh, to put forward, so don't leave us yet. We are going to uh, tee up our next group, which is, I gotta get back to my list, Charlie Moret and Jim Tanzillo from Invest Michigan. Are you gentlemen ready? Yes, we are. Thanks, Sandra, and thanks yeah. for the invite, and yeah. great to see so many familiar faces. Valerie, always nice to see you. I know you've done a lot of work with your company, so uh, I'll just open up with a few comments and then uh, my partner Jim will uh, work through the uh, the detail. But, um, you know, something that, uh, you know, strikes me, I've, I've been doing this for about 40 years. I've done it in several different markets, Chicago, New York, um, uh, Rhode Island, and even internationally. And for the last eight or nine years, I've been in Michigan and Michigan's really very blessed for the startup community. It, it has a tremendous amount of resources. It has a, a lot of ways to help startups. And so uh, one, of, one of the advices I would always give to, uh, you know, early stage entrepreneurs is, you know, you're real excited about your technology. You're excited about your company. And, and what makes you a strong entrepreneur is, is you go and get it, you know, you're, you're out there, you're hustling. But when it comes to financing your company, you know, there's a real continuum of financing that exists, you know, from the very early stages, you know, through the pre-seed into the seed into the series A. And you've heard that this morning about the, the different funds that have been presented already and exactly where they are. So to really expedite your financing of your company, I would strongly encourage you, if you haven't, find yourself a mentor, somebody who has a good understanding of how financing works and is able to help guide you through that process and making sure that you approach the right funds at the right time because you can burn up a lot of your own time capital by going to the wrong funds at the wrong time. So, and you know, there's organizations like the Small Business Development Corporation that really does have, uh, you know, tremendous people working with it and are very familiar with the landscape. So focus on that sort of continuum of financing and the sources that exist. You know, just very briefly, uh, our fund's been in existence about eight years now. We're an independent fund. We we are now focused on the uh, pre-series A range. So uh, as was said earlier, you know, the early stage, you have the m -track, you have uh, BAF, you have different grant programs, SBIR, federal programs, you know, then you have the first capital fund, then you have the pre-seed fund through Michigan Rise, and then you get into the later funds such as Invest Michigan and uh, Grand Angels and uh, Ann Arbor Angels and Michigan Angel Fund, and that's where you really get to uh, the continuum of uh, financing that can really help move it along. Uh, we've we've invested uh, in over 50 companies to date. Uh, we've done probably over 120 investments. Uh, myself, I've I've now been involved with probably a couple hundred companies, and so we have a uh, a good understanding of the early stage market. But I think to what Paul said earlier, you know, even with that. 
every day we're learning something new and there's always something new and exciting, which really makes this uh, space exceptionally uh, fun to work in. So with that, I'm gonna turn it over to my partner, Jim, and uh, he'll walk you through a little bit more detail. Thank you, Charlie. Um, trying to share my screen here. Is that, has anyone seen anything? Oh, you guys are, okay. I see your title slide, yep. Yes, we Perfect. see the title slide. Perfect. Um, thanks for the intro, Charlie. Thank you, Sandra, for having us, and thanks for everyone being here. Um, just to build on what Charlie said, I spent some time in the Chicago ecosystem about um, eight years ago now, and where Michigan is at today kind of reminds me a lot of where Chicago was at the time. Uh, they had just opened up 1871, which has now become the model around the U.S. for entrepreneurial support systems, and they've really turned into a an exciting ecosystem. And I, I see a lot of the same things that I saw in Chicago uh, here in Michigan today. So really exciting time to be an entrepreneur and an investor in Michigan. Um, so a little bit about our team, as, as Charlie mentioned, uh, we have been at this now for seven years. Uh, we have over 28 years of experience investing in and working with startups and entrepreneurs. Uh, collectively, we've reviewed uh, thousands of early stage opportunities. Uh, and collectively invested in over 100 startup companies, 53 of which are in the state of Michigan. Um, some history about our fund. We were founded in 2014 by, by Charlie and originally funded by the MEDC from 2014 to 2019. Since then, we've evolved into a self-sustaining evergreen fund which means that all our returns go right back into the fund for fund operations, support of our current portfolio companies, and support of new opportunities. Um, to date, we've invested in 53 early stage Michigan technology companies. 48% of these investments were led by women or entrepreneurs of color. 47% uh, of our investments are university spinouts. And what's interesting is more than half of our companies have gone on to accomplish a big milestone, uh, which we classify as a Series A. Um, they've been acquired, they've attracted strategic investment, uh, or they've become self-sustaining on their own right. Uh, 33 of our companies are still active, and we've been blessed enough to have 13 exits which, that have returned capital into our fund. Um, we've really, over the last seven years, developed an expertise at the seed stage here in the Midwest. We've built out relationships across the country with investors. Uh, we have a network of over 200 investors that we collaborate with around the country, uh, as well as a number of entrepreneurs. Uh, we've made 119 investments into our 53 companies. So um, we really, I, I think, we're our expertise comes into play is around financing strategy, go to market strategy and governance. And then we, again, we've built up this network. So if there's a question that an entrepreneur has or an issue that we don't know the answer to, uh, we're more than happy to open up our network and, and find someone who, who can help with whatever is ailing uh, the company. Our investment focus, uh, like all the other companies here, we invest in tech companies. Uh, the companies do have to have a, a strong presence here in the state of Michigan. We look for high growth companies, uh, so companies that are going to return capital to investors. Um, we have traditionally invested in early seed. I'd say right now the, the stage of company we invest in is at the late seed, and that means a lot of things to different people. Um, so I would say companies either with strong IP and or they have validated product market fit with some, some customer traction and revenue. Uh, we try to invest, invest our first check in the last round before a Series A. So our goal is to get help get the company to a Series A uh, post-investment. Uh, as Charlie mentioned and, and others before, there's a continuum of funding. So uh, if your company is early, uh, typically we see companies raised from angels, friends and family, uh, invested trade ventures, uh, Michigan Rise, um, and then as you grow and show progress that you, you've you made with your investment, um, that's typically when we'll take a look. 
Um, our process, uh, we typically like to have companies send us investor materials. Uh, so that includes a pitch deck, an executive summary, financials, a cap table. Um, and then we typically schedule a 20 to 30 minute intro meeting to determine the fit. Uh, and if we uh, determine that on the surface things are a fit, then we'll dive into deeper due diligence, uh, followed by an investment decision and, and hopefully a closing. Some of the criteria that we look for, uh, again, Michigan presence, technology focus. Uh, we look for tenacious entrepreneurs with well-rounded teams um, and ideally domain expertise. I'm getting some feedback. Everyone, please be sure you're muted. And then, yeah, keep going, Jim. Let's see, because it was fine a second ago and maybe it'll come back. Yeah, okay, cool. Uh, yeah, so we invest in tenacious entrepreneurs with well-rounded teams, ideally uh, some level of domain expertise in the management. Uh, and then we look, we look at the entrepreneurial drive of the team as well. Uh, other criteria, we look at the market landscape, how your product or solution differentiates. Uh, so what your value proposition, how is it different? How are you going to beat the competition? Uh, we dig into the financial strategy. So how are you going to, how have you been funded to date and how will you be funded in the future? So what level of investment is it going to take um, to, to get you to a level of success? Uh, we look at the terms of the deal. So, um, you know, in, in relation to all the other strengths and weaknesses of the deal, uh, we put that in context of the terms. Uh, we do like to see a path to an exit. Uh, so we do dig into the exit strategy with the entrepreneurs. And then we also want to make sure that the round is being used appropriately. The, so we dig into the uses of cash uh, and we like to see that that's kind of aligned uh, to what we think it'll take the company to get to the next level of financing. Uh, some of our success stories, uh, Paul touched on Tetra at the beginning, that that's one of our largest success stories. We were the, among the first institutional investors in Tetra, which exited for 500 million, uh, Celsi, which had a, a large exit, and then two other ones, Parabricks, sp Splits, uh, three other ones, and, and Pico Spray, all of which were acquired by larger companies. Uh, we've had some great success with uh, large financings. So uh, Auto Books just announced that they raised a $25 million Series B. Uh, O&L has raised a $45 million Series B. Bloomscape's gone on to a $15 million Series B. Uh, SkySpecs has raised $17 million. And then two others, Orbion and Movellus, have raised uh, significant amounts at the Series A level. Uh, we also get involved, too, given the stage that we invest. Uh, we've offered strategic support to a number of companies. Uh, a couple to highlight. One is Ad Adapted. Uh, this was a company that had a lot of pro promise, but uh, really struggled to fundraise, and they were on the verge of shutting their doors. Uh, Invest Michigan stepped in and led uh, a series of internal rounds to really get the company stabilized. And I'm proud to say that uh, over the last year, they last year they had eight million in revenue and attracted a Series A investor. Um, so they, they're they well on their way. Um, and then a, a couple others, Fifth Eye, Genomenon, Give and Take, uh, were active on the board uh, and, and have helped those companies with financing advice and go-to-market strategy uh, and bringing some talent around uh, to each of these organizations. So you know, I would say we, we do like to be involved with companies at an early stage and really we try to get all of our companies to the next level uh, where we can hand the baton off to um, the, the next large group of investors. Uh, like I said, we, we've established over 200 relationships around the country and have partnered with some of the, the best VCs in the country. Uh, we really do try to connect our companies um, to as many people and, and organizations in our network as we can uh, that can, they can help them along. And with that, I'll open it up to questions. Um, I will say that if you're interested in partnering with us, uh, we, we do like to establish relationships over time. Um, so you can visit our website at investmichigan.org uh, and then fill out our, the contact info from there. Wonderful, thank you. Um, I'm not seeing any questions in the chat right at the moment. So if anyone 
has a question. I don't want to get everybody jumping in at once, but you can unmute and ask your question. Hey, Sandra, I'm, I might uh, just uh, jump in with a thought around safes because I know it came up twice today. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, you know, safes were born out of uh, Y Combinator and utilized by Techstars. And a, a big reason why they were originally utilized was because since they were an accelerator program for about 12 weeks, um, they often would go on to raise money from the network that was supporting those incubators. So they came up with the safe, you know, a simple agreement for future equity. And it made a lot of sense because it was a quick way to get money into the company. You know, I think safes have have its place, certainly at the earlier stage when you're looking at, you know, pre pre seed or pre seed area, you know, it, it's a good uh, mechanism. The only thing that I would, you know, adv advise uh, entrepreneurs is, you know, there's often a what's called uh, kicking the can down down the road with regard to valuation. And two things happen. Sometimes there's unrealistic expectations uh, as to what the value of a company is. And obviously it's always uh, between buyer and seller. So, you know, safes you'll see at the earlier stage, but as you get into, you know, later seed stage or pre-series A, it's very unlikely. The other thing is, you know, as I said earlier, there's a lot of expertise around. So going out with the wrong structure or believing that, you know, the company's position is is such term, validate that with, you know, an external party, whether it would be with a, uh, you know, somebody from the Small Business Development Center or uh, a financial mentor that really understands it. The other big uh, problem that sometimes happens at the early stage is that, you know, entrepreneurs might raise money on terms that are not market terms. And what that means is, you know, maybe they have some angels or friends, you know, they overvalue the company. Um, and then as the process goes on, they struggle to raise additional financing down the road because, you know, they're really at a market term. So even though it feels great to have a high value on your company, I, you know, I think we found over the years that one of the biggest impediments to getting financing is overvaluing the company. So it's something to be cautious about. Use a lot of your financial mentors to help you, you know, really uh, kind of put it in the context of where the market really is. So just a couple of comments to think about. Great. Thank you. Um, real quick, Jeff and Prem, Lana's question has been put in the chat if you have an opportunity to look over there and see it and perhaps give it an answer in the chat uh, but we do have one or two questions for charlie and jim before we have to wrap up because we are reaching the end of our time bernard had a question are you able to invest in foreign entities that intend to establish a michigan presence jim you're muted there you go yeah my off mute now yes Okay. Um, typically, we would engage in the conversation once the company has actually moved to Michigan. Um, so we're we're really not in the attraction business right now. Um, so yeah, I would uh, encourage that company to reach out once they have established the presence in Michigan. Understood. Okay. Do we have time for one last question? Anyone want to have a question for Jim or Charlie? Oh, new message. No, I don't see a question out there. Well, we are kind of reaching the end of our time. I'm sorry if we, we don't have a lot of questions there at the end, Charlie and Jim, but your presentation was excellent and you cover a lot of really interesting ground. Um, before I wrap everything up, I would first of all like um, to thank all of our presenters today for their eye-opening look inside the investment process. And thank you to the Michigan Venture Capital Association for their support in organizing this series. And lastly, thanks to all of you for joining us today for the first Turn the Tables event. I hope you'll join us again on June 29th when we will have three more VC firms sharing their stories. Those investors will be announced in the next month or two. And also please consider joining us for Kalamazoo Venture Tuesday next month on April 27th at nine. KVT is a traditional pitch event in which three companies will pitch to three investors. And after each pitch, the investors will share what they liked, what went wrong, and how the pitches can be improved. The companies for April 27th will be Lighting Designer, which offers a SaaS solution for lighting professionals in the entertainment industry, 
TSRL, which is developing a transdermal delivery of influenza treatment, and Our Nation Archive, which provides a digital technology software service that turns big data analytics into 3D graphic renderings of real-time geospatial events. Our esteemed panel of investors for the April 27th event will be Lindsay Aspergren from North Coast Ventures, Adrian Fortino from Mercury Fund, and Ken Kuski from Blue Water Angels. You can register for the KB team meeting at our website, uh, which is found at wmedic.med.wmich.edu. And thank you again, all of you, and have a wonderful day. I hope to see you next time. Thank you. Thanks.